And you're welcome back. That was Sika Befie by Kweku Darlington featuring Kwame Eugene, Kweku Flake, Famiye, and also Yao Talk. Almost a Sika Befie, Sika Befie. Yes. Today we are talking about something that is very essential to not just to our wallets or our pockets, but you know, to our overall health. And we are going to be discussing, you know, the basic forms of financial management on the lifestyle segments. I am Miriam Abna Adede, and this is the Coco Digest Morning Show. We welcome you back to the show. I have my guest with me in the studio, but before I introduce him, you know, maybe you probably will be saving for that dream future, that family, that, you know, lifestyle you've always wanted. It is very important for you to understand the basic forms of financial management so you can live a stress-free life to save towards that goal that dream you know that vacation you want and that is the conversation we are going to be having today on the show now I have with me um, a financial expert <laughs> and he is um, a detail um, oriented finance professional with a proven track record of dynamic leadership and remarkable achievement in the investment management sector. He currently leads the client's coverage um, team at Stambeck Investment Management Services with nearly a decade of experience. And so you know the kind of conversation we are bringing to you. It is not really something you know technical. It is going to be basic, but very, very informative. And I have with me this month, Bredu. Thank you, <laughs> Good morning to our viewers as well. Good morning, Desmond. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you doing? I, I mean, can smell money all over you. <laughs> God has been good. Um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm well. Um, mm. Life is, is go going well. Mm. Like always, we always look forward to yeah. the next thing. We always look forward to being better, to improving yeah. every day. So, yes. Can I ask you how you're also doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing so great because, okay. you know, payday is just at the corner. So, Sika <laughs> Ebefie, Ebefie. Yeah. Yes, it was right. a nice song. <laughs> right. So, we are discussing the basic forms of financial management. Um, to you, how would you say or describe what financial management is to, you know, your day-to-day -day, um, life? So, when you talk about financial management, just to break it down, mm. it's just making decisions about your money or your finances on a daily basis, like rightly mentioned. Mm. But for me, fundamentally, we're looking at four questions that okay. you you ask yourself. Mm. So the first one is, how much money am I making? Okay. Um, how much am I spending? How much am I saving? And how much I can improve? Yes. And that's all that financial management is about. In simple terms, how much money am I making? Okay, okay. I earn 500 CDs, 1,000 CDs, 2,000 CDs. Out of the 2,000 CDs, how much can I save? I'm able to save 10 CDs, 20 CDs. Mm. How much do I spend? It means I spend 1,950. Yeah. And how then can I improve? Does it mean I need to make more money? Money. You understand? Yeah. So that's the basics. Mm. Now, if you look at it on a broader scale, then you can talk about, say, savings, budgeting, investments. Investment. Yeah. And I heard you guys talk about wills, inheritance, yeah. planning, yeah. legacy. So in basic form, how much money you make, how much you spend, how much you save, and how you can improve. And that's all financial management is about. Wow. So we just got started with a conversation. And you're, if you're struggling with your finances, this conversation is for you. Call a friend, call a family member. That friend of yours that you know has been you know, spending a lot Call him or her to join the conversation. You can send in your WhatsApp, um, sorry, your messages to our WhatsApp number, which has been displayed on the screen, and also via our streams, our live streams on Facebook and also uh, YouTube, and we'll gladly answer all your questions. Now, this point, how does managing finance, you know, impact our overall life? You know, it's really crucial. Mm. You see, sometimes. If you, are, you don't have money, mm. everything annoys you Ow. in this world. So it's really, it, it's really important because it not just affects just you, but yeah. it affects how you relate with other people. And so for me, having... Okay, so put it this way. Oh, okay. In, on a daily basis, we have a lot of stresses. Maybe work, family, relationships, and everything in yeah. between. Then you, you compound it with the, the financial management bit or the money stressing or you also... also it becomes even much more difficult for you. Yeah. And so for me, managing money, for me, it's, it's a basic skill that you need to have because, again, not everybody has so much money. Mm. And so the little that you have, you need to find a way to manage so that mm. at least you are not stressed also on that side. Mm. Again, it also talks about two things with respect to either you are increasing your income or you're reducing your expenses. Yeah. 
And so if you think of how money can affect your lifestyle every day, mm. it's really about maybe the mental bit as well, yeah. as well as how you can improve, improve up, up on it. Yes. Right. And I'm so glad you're an expert because we are mm. going to take a lot yeah. from you, especially from your personal experiences. Yes. So tell us, on a normal day, yeah. how do you practically, yes. how do you manage your finances? So for me, I always say that the first thing for me is I am aware of my situation. Okay. I'm aware of the things I can afford mm. and the things I cannot afford to do. Okay. So if um, my friends tell me that, okay, let's do this, let's go here, let's buy this, I, I'm aware that, okay, maybe I, I, I may not afford it. And yeah. so for me, the self or the honest self-assessment is really important. And I think that for everybody, if, for example, again, just relating to like a normal person, yeah. if, let's say, your, your kid asks you to buy maybe a toy or a particular thing, when I was growing up, I didn't understand when my mom said that, oh, um, she, doesn't have money. she doesn't have money. Yeah. It, it, it didn't make sense to me. But now that I'm an adult, <laughs> I understand because there are things that she can afford to do and things that she cannot afford to do. Mm. So that's the first part of the conversation. Have that honest self-reflection. You could even go into further details and say, that, okay, how much do I, or what do I own? Who do I owe? How much money do I make? A lot of things can come to play. But again, it's all about the honest self-assessment. And I do this on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Because again, as I make day-to-day decisions, if somebody says, okay, there's an opportunity here, can I actually afford to do that? Yeah. So that's the first thing I always do. The second thing that has saved my life <laughs> is paying myself first. Okay. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a weird concept, but what it essentially means is that if you make your income or if you're paid your salary, you need to take a portion and dedicate that to yourself as the, the, the gift to your future self. Okay. Now, here's why. You, you make a salary of, say, a 1,000 CDs, and you end up paying electricity bill, water mm. bill, every other bill. Mm. What you've become is what we call an income redistribution center. Okay. You get the income, and you redistribute to other people. Mm. What are you giving to yourself? Mm. And so for me, what has really, really helped me a lot is once I get paid, the first thing I do is to move a portion out of my bank account, either to an investment, I'm sure we'll talk about investment later on, mm, or to yeah. anything that I know that I will not spend that yeah. money on. Again, in my experience... I have a follow-up question yes. to this, can yes. I ask? Okay, mm-hmm. so what goes into deciding, you know, that portion of yes. amount of money you yes. want to pay yourself? Yes. So another thing I need to mention is that personal finances is absolutely personal. Yeah. And I just keep talking about it. For somebody, that percentage, I mean, you need to drop a budget. So mm-hmm. maybe you can drop it, and I'm, I'll speak on it a little bit. But for me, the, the, the most important thing is the consistency and the discipline. Okay. So I know that I'll be able to consistently put aside 50 CDs, 100 CDs every month. And that is the portion that I, I know after drawing my budget, that, mm-hmm. that's where I can dedicate. You know, being in a situation where you say, oh, this month I'll do 2,000 CDs. Meanwhile, yeah. you earn 2,500 CDs. <laughs> so for yeah. me, it's the, the discipline bit, what a figure, what amount. Again, some books will tell you, or some people will tell you that, oh, do 20% of your income. Mm. For somebody earning 1,000 CDs, 20% will not probably be realistic. Yeah. If it is 10 CDs, if it is 50 CDs, if it is 100 CDs, you can actually put aside consistently, mm. do it. And so for me, I always say that related to your personal situation, okay. 10 CDs, 100 CDs, it really depends on you. Now, back to the earlier point. Mm. Again, in my experience, if... I don't save before spending, I end up with nothing. Oh. Because again, again, I also my experience as because <laughs> if I see the money in my account, I'll be tempted to, oh, let's do let's do, yeah. let's do here and there. But once I've taken that portion out of the money, I know that okay, I have only 900 CDs left, and that is what I can manage. And so yeah. for me, those are the two important things. And I mean, I can talk about more, but yeah. under self-assessment and also taking your savings components first. Yes before you think of spending. Someone will also say, okay, well, I've taken out, let's say, yeah. 500 cities. Yes. I'm being paid 2,000 and yes. I'm taking out 500 to pay myself. Yes. At the end of the month, or getting to the end of the month, I spent my 1,005 yes. and then I have to still get into my account yes. for the 500 yes. Ghana cities. What do you think is the problem in there? So you see, one, one thing is that fundamentally, we don't like budgeting. Mm. Because if you've, you earn 2,000 cities, and you've done a budget, you know that probably the 500 CDs that you are putting aside 
or you are, you are spending may not be everything. Yeah. Maybe you have other obligations. Maybe you're paying rent or allocation towards rent. You are mm -hmm. doing family heat bit here and there. So for me, the first step is to know that, okay, how much can I consistently put aside? Mm -hmm. And so, again, what I, can, what I used to do is that, okay, even if I put aside 500 CDs that I want to put aside, mm -hmm. I break into, say, two or three components. Mm -hmm. Now, out of the 500 CDs, 100 CDs is a no-go area. So even if I dip into the 500 CDs, I know that the 100 CDs, that is, that is a no-go area. Mm. And that is for my future self. So it's okay. Again, sometimes, not sometimes, you know Ghana is hard. <laughs> so it, we need to know that, okay, it's not everything, that, it's not every day that you'll be able to save that yeah. amount consistently. But you should probably have to have a minimum threshold mm. that you know that, okay, below the 100 CDs, I'm not touching yeah. it. Yeah, that, that, that's for me. And you can't say that you're going to um, yeah. go to the money you will not spend and just go and... But you know, with this, yes. um, should the person have you know, some number of years yes. in mind to save that amount of money yes. consistently yes. or it should just be like a normal thing that the person wants to do? No, so when it comes to savings, first, mm. let me just try and distinguish between savings and investment. I'll come to that. Yeah. So you see, when you save, it's like you're putting money aside for a future expense mm. or when you are saying that, okay... Let's say you've done your budget and you choose to spend, let's say you, you can spend 100 CDs in a day, yeah. but you choose to spend 60 CDs. You've saved the 40 CDs, but you save to invest. You don't just save and keep it there. Mm. Now, when it comes to the, your question that you asked, yeah. for me, you don't just save for saving sake. Mm. You need to have a goal in mind. Yeah. For me, for young people that were watching, there are five goals you need to have. Okay. The first one is for your retirement. The second is for maybe your first property, your children's education, legacy, and enjoyment. <laughs> so these are the five, but again, retirement, your first property, um, children's education, I mean, sharing or legacy, and enjoyment. enjoyment. And so if you know that, okay, I'm retiring in 20 years' time or 30 years' time, then you can say, okay, I'm saving 100 cities towards my mm -hmm. retirement. If I know I'm enjoying in, in December, which is two months' time mm -hmm. or three months' time, I know that, okay, I need to do something short, short term to get to that, that December. So for yeah. me, whatever you choose to save or invest in, it needs to know that what is the end goal? What am I trying to achieve here? That's mm -hmm. for me the most important thing. Don't just save. Either if something comes up, we just dip into it and you just spend yeah. it. Yes. So have so, the goal in mind. Okay. So the goal also means your motivation, right? Exactly. exactly. Wow. So um, what if I'm a young person? Yes. I don't intend having kids anytime soon. Yes. Even if I should have kids, yes. it's my husband's responsibility to take <laughs> care of them. <laughs> right? And yes. I also, I'm, you know, saving just for enjoyment. Enjoyment. Is that also possible? So you see, enjoyment, and, and sometimes, I remember I did a program and I told them that enjoyment is very important because, first of all, we only live once. Mm. And it's not always good to say that, okay, I'm keeping this... Because probably we spoke about next of kin. Next of kin will come and enjoy everything in between. Yeah. But you see, you shouldn't only focus on the enjoyment at the expense of your other goals. Okay. So yes, enjoyment is important. Mm. But again, we often think that oh, retirement is far. Even mm. though for anything, think of your retirement. Okay. You can't work for the rest That's of your so life. Nice. So if not if for anything at all, think of it. And we have this thing in Ghana where we say, oh, my children my retirement. Yeah. But you see, that's not, that's not the case. Already, Ghana is hard. Mm. So if you're going to put extra bedding, it's going to be an, another it's problem. True. And so for me, not for anything at all, create the kind of retirement that you want. If you want to rely on, for example, SNET, some pay some, as low as 300 or 400 cities a month. Okay. Ask yourself, what do that do for you? And so if not for anything at all, the retirement bit should also be important okay. as much as... Your enjoyment, enjoyment is also important. Enjoyment is very, very necessary. <laughs> I'm so much concerned about that. But if you just joined us, we've been having a conversation here with Desmond Verdu, a financial management expert. And he's taking us into the, you know, the basic forms of uh, managing our finances. And that is the conversation we've been having. You can join us by sending in your messages to our WhatsApp number, which has been displayed on the screen. And also, you can call and ask any question you want to ask, you know, pertaining to the topic for discussion. And I know Desmond is going to do justice to that. I'm really enjoying this conversation because when it comes to money, <laughs> it's very serious. Now let's talk about investment. Yes. It looks very intimidating. Yes. A lot of people do not want to invest. Yes. 
I, I started working not too long ago. Yeah. And the first advice my father gave me yeah. was not to invest. Mm. Save your money. <laughs> Put it in a susu box. <laughs> Don't give it to any bank. Okay. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so I, I'm really happy that I distinguish between savings, savings and, and investments. Investment. Because if not for anything at all, we have something we call inflation. Mm. And inflation is just the general increase in price levels. Yeah. So, for instance, today you buy something for 100 CDs. In a year's time, you probably need 120 CDs to buy the same thing. But if you keep the money in the susu box mm. or under your bed or somewhere that I might just keep the money, <laughs> in a year's time, it's still the same 100 CDs. Yeah. But you probably need more money to buy the same item. Mm. Now, back to your question. Yes, I mean, in our current experience, we, people have a lot of bad experience with investments mm. now. And rightly, um, rightly so, they have uh, um, a reason for concern. Yeah. But for me, if not for anything at all, inflation still erodes the value of your wealth or your money away. And so you need to protect it. Now, coming to investment, people always think that investment is only financial assets. Okay. Investment is both financial asset and non-financial asset. Mm. Now, think about it this way. If you choose to put your money in a business, you are still investing your money. Okay. If you choose to put your money or buy, let's say, land, it's okay, I hope to resell this land in two, three years' time. It's still an investment for you. Yeah. If you choose to, say, um, put your, your money in a ride-hailing business and buy a car for that purpose, mm. it's also an investment for you. If you choose to put your money in a treasury bill, in a fixed deposit, in a mutual fund, mm. it is still investment. And so for me, whether you choose to even invest or not, it's a risk. Mm. If you choose not to invest and keep your money in your bank account or keep your money even under your bed, mm. for instance, a thief can break into your house and mm. steal it. Yeah. If you choose to put your money in a business, the business can even go down. Yeah. And so for me, you need to invest. It's not like, oh, I can choose not to invest. Yeah. It's not for anything. They are both non-financial and financial assets to invest in. But if you want to invest, for me, you need to ask yourself three fundamental questions. Okay. The first thing is, Mimi, what... Is my investment objective. What am I investing for? Am I investing for my retirement, for medical expense, for travel, mm. for enjoyment? It's mm. for anything. You can invest for anything at all. The next thing is that, okay, I should know that whatever I choose to put my money in, there's risk involved. Mm. Matter of fact, when I was driving here to here, <laughs> it's risk. Because yeah. you, somebody can just hit your car, for yeah. instance. If, even if you are sleeping, there's the risk. risk involved. <laughs> yeah. And so you choosing whether to invest or not to invest, mm. there's risk involved. Then the most crucial bit is, am I willing and able to take on this mm. risk? And that's for me, it will answer your question whether this investment is for you or oh, not yes. for you, really important. Yeah. Before I come to your own personal yes. you know, experience with yes. investment, yes. I have a question that I want to ask. You know, yes. there was this lady that made mention of the fact that she's yes. not going to invest because yes. even, I'm talking about monetary investments, yes. even if she should invest her yes. money, the currency yes. doesn't, or the value of the money does not yes. increase, yes. even in the next 10 years. Yes. So just as you're saying, if I should save it in my sisu yes. box, it is still going to be yes. the same thing. So why don't I save in maybe a foreign currency? <laughs> I'll, I'll address your question on, on two levels, right? <laughs> so the first part is that if you choose not to invest and mm. keep it in a sisu box, you suffer the full effect of inflation. And so if inflation is 20%, if next year you need 120 CDs, mm. you still have to bear in that 20%. Yeah. If you choose to invest and you get even, say, 15%, that's 115 CDs. Yeah. And so you only need five CDs to top up. And mm. so the lesser of, of two evils, yeah. either you're suffering the full effect of inflation yeah. or at least investing a little, mm. getting some small returns, mm. and just be able to bridge the little gap that's left. And so that's the first part. The second part about the foreign currency is always interesting. And I always yeah. get this question many, All many a time. time, right? There was no way I was going to ask you this. <laughs> So you see, in fact, I did a, a video on my YouTube channel mm. why you should not convert your currency into, into foreign currency, your, wow. your local currency. And that was a few years ago. And, and, and when the whole city division started, mm. I could see some really wonderful comments <laughs> under, my, under my YouTube channel. I'd have to go and look at it after this um, but you see, interview. Fundamentally, mm. if we are all to change our city into dollar or into pound or whatever currency, we end up putting more pressure on mm. the local currency. And so we call this a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Oh, we know the city will depreciate. Let me help it depreciate. And by changing your money, it's like you don't need the dollar. Mm. 
but somebody probably even needs it to maybe buy some goods and services. Yeah. But you are probably just hoarding the dollar. So you're, you're taking a bit of the money away from the system. Mm. Again, if demand keeps increasing and supply is low, the price would go up. Mm. And that's what we keep putting pressure on the oh. currency oh. or local city. Again, if you have some dollar obligations and you want to hedge against it, absolutely, you can have some foreign currency. Another thing is that if you're looking at as diversification, where you have local currency investment, you want to have foreign currency investment, it's also fine. And so it's just a mixture of what is really the motivation. Are you just speculating? Are you just keeping the money just because you want to convert your currency into mm. dollar and just mm. keep it? What is the essence? And the problem is, if we all do the conversion, what will happen is that it will translate into the, the our price levels. Mm. Again, everything we, we spend on, everywhere, so it's, it's pegged to the dollar. Yeah. And so if the person, again, dollar goes up, you want to buy something, the person tells you that, oh, now, if I'm going to import, the dollar will probably go up again. And so they will increase the price for you. So it's really important that we know or have that mentality that if you don't have any dollar obligation or foreign currency, there's no need to convert your, your money. Mm. But if you have that obligation, absolutely. Um, and for also uh, for diversification. So for, for me, yes. um, who wishes to save because yes. I'm scared the yes. value of the money will depreciate yes. anytime soon. Yes. Is it safe for me to save in a foreign currency? Again, so if that is your motivation and that's your end goal, that mm. you want to just save in that foreign currency, absolutely. But again, it shouldn't be a situation where we are all trying to convert our seed into dollars just for that purpose. Because, again, like I said, we'll end up all bearing the brunt of it. Mm. We'll end up paying more for everything we okay. buy. So we have a question here, sure. and this is from Nana Kwame, and he's asking, what are the different sources of financial management? Sources of financial management? Yeah. I mean, that's very difficult to answer because I don't know what it means. But when we talk about financial management, there are some six key components. Mm. You can talk about your goal setting, mm. what kind of goals you have. You can talk about debt management. Yeah. You can talk about savings and investment. You can talk about risk management, mm. like insurance, for instance. You can talk about other parts, like yeah. say the real inheritance legacy. Sure. Um, but in terms of sources, uh, I'm not sure you what the can't. question okay. is. Okay, thank you very much. Now we'll be wrapping up shortly. But let let's let me ask you this very important yes. question: How do we balance the money we save for future and then the one we, we use for enjoyment? Yeah. I'm more particular about <laughs> the enjoyment, but you know, enjoyment is important. I want to know the balance. <laughs> so you see, again, for me, again, let me go back to my earlier point. Mm. Personal finance is best now, mm. and so for somebody, it is a thousand CDs they can put aside for enjoyment mm. and 5,000 CDs for their retirement. Mm. For somebody, it's only 50 they can put for enjoyment. And so for me, you need to know your specific context. Okay. And so the first thing I can tell you is that please take time to draw mm. up a budget for yourself with your goals that you have in mind. Mm. And know that, okay, if I have 1,000 CDs to save or to put away, mm. which of them is more important to me? Is it the retirement? Is it my first property? Or is the enjoyment? Yeah. Then you can make allocations to it. So, for example, you can put aside 500 CDs. You say that okay, out of 500 CDs, 250 is for my retirement. 150 is for my maybe my rent I'm paying in a year's yeah, time. Yeah. The other 150 CDs, or maybe 100 CDs is for my enjoyment. Mm. My, my dirty December. That's how you <laughs> you categorize right, it. It's really right, important. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Um, my last question. No, no more so, than happy to <laughs> Debt. We all know debt is a yes. reality. Yes. You can't um, take that out of life. Yes. How do you, how do we also balance? You know, trying to pay our debt and yes. also trying to live a healthy life. Yes, I mean it's really important, right? Mm. Because. Some people, again, depending on who you listen to, some will tell you, oh, that is no good, that is bad. Yeah. But for me, it depends on what the motivation is. Mm. If you are funding your wants with debt, it, it is not helping you. Or if the things you are buying with the debt, it's not, it doesn't have any long-lasting value. You, you are not making any money out of it. you have to retreat that again. With respect to the... What you just said. State it again. Okay, so when it comes to debt, yeah. it depends on who you listen to. Yeah. Whether it is, some people tell you that it's not a good debt, some mm -hmm. will tell you that it's a bad debt. But when you are funding your debt, your wants, your wants. with debt, so yeah. for example, because there's a new iPhone in town, you choose to buy, not because your, your phone is done, done anything, mm -hmm. not because maybe you need a better phone to do, maybe your YouTube channel or your influencer mm -hmm. or whatever it is. You just want to buy a new phone and you want to borrow somebody's money to yeah. do that. Or you want to borrow somebody's money to buy some new clothing just because you want to just maybe get some new clothing. You are funding your mm. wants with debt. And that is not a good place to mm. be. And so for me, that is where you need to have that angle of, of, of looking for me yeah. at. 
I don't want to find, it's only my needs that I want to find. Mm. Again, be mindful of um, high interest when you're going for the debt and what, what points them. Mm. Again, some people will tell you that, oh, and they'll come to you in a nice way and say, oh, it is only 5% a month. 5% mm. a month is times 12 is 60% a year. Yeah. And so even for your business, be mindful of the kind of debt you take. Just ask a bit more questions before you choose right. to. Right. Desmond, um, in your own words, yes. how, how would you advise people to stay informed yes. um, with financial management, you know, yes. education on that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's really important. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, again, staying informed means that either reading books or YouTube channels or videos, um, 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 speaking to professionals. Um, and so if people want to speak to me about finances or money, I'm more than happy to engage them on it. But again... Please be deliberate about it. Mm. And so if it's YouTube, you want to watch videos on, um, just, and programs like this, you need to, like you said, call yeah. other people to, exactly. to watch. And, and watch right, them. so we, we have a question here. Yeah. Good morning, Emmanuel here. I want to ask a question on my Sims account. Yeah. Um, since Mr. Desmond is from Stambik, yes. I'm having uh, the Stambik Income Fund yeah. Trust account, yeah. which I deposit into. Mistakenly, yeah. I deposited into the cash trust yeah. and asked the bank to push to the income fund. They did, but I did not get any interest on that amount. Why? I think it's just um, follow up maybe I'll put my my, yeah. my details, just send the details. And okay, so guys. you can just do that and yes. um, put out your oh, So if you want to reach out to me, yeah. um, mostly I'm very active on Twitter, okay. at Desmond Bredu. Yeah. Um, Facebook is Desmond Bredu and also um, Instagram as well. But if you want to also reach out um, to Stambic Investment, you're on the fourth floor of Stambic Heights. Okay. You come to us, we're more than happy to engage you on a personal level to understand what you're looking for mm. before we choose investment options for you. So come mm. to us as fourth floor of Stambic Heights. Yeah. We're more than happy to engage you. But if you want to reach out to me, the best place is either Twitter or um, um, LinkedIn. This one yeah, yes. or your personal phone number. Um, that is not... No, that's not... Uh, no, right. it's, uh, okay. maybe, but, Email is askdesmondbredu at gmail.com. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you so, so, so much. And I have to um, emphasize on the fact that he's very active on Twitter, Twitter or yeah. X. That is where we got him from. And he was just, you know, um, apt. He had to, you know, respond to us quickly. And yeah. we are so grateful to have you, you on the show this morning. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you have learned a lot from our conversation today, you know, discussing the basic forms of financial management. And I know henceforth, we are all going to, you know, manage our finances well, because December is just at the corner. You know what I mean, right? So this is where we end the lifestyle segment. We have amazing personalities to celebrate on the birthday segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today was your birthday. I heard today was your birthday. I heard today was your birthday. All right, so you're welcome back, and um, we are still here on the Koko Digest Morning Show. I am Miriam Abnadide. Now, the birthday segment is up. Let's take our first birthday celebrant. Our first birthday celebrant is um, Madame Hajara, a.k.a. Hajia Mame Papebi. Glorious birthday to my Kuma Bakope. God bless you for everything you have been doing for the family. Much love. And this is from me, a personal message. Love you so much. And we also have this from Marcelo. And it is to Ethel Mingo. Okay. On your special day and always, I wish you happiness, adventure, and memories um, to treasure. You are an, an incredible friend and an inspiring person. Cheers to another fantastic year. And this is to Mr. and Mrs. Valentine Vojogbe. Vojogbe. Okay. Celebrating 26 years in marriage. Wow. May your love continue to shine brightly. Wishing you a lifetime of love and happiness. Congratulations on another year of love and laughter. Here's to many more years of togetherness. May your love story keep inspiring others. And this is to Mr. John um, Annabelle Kofi. 
from your children. They are saying a happy birthday to the world's best, best dad. May you live long to enjoy the fruits of your labor. This is from your children. And we also have this from Abna Boabing to Mrs. Boham. Happy birthday, Mrs. Boham. Wishing you a day filled with joy, love, and all the wonderful things you deserve. You are such an amazing person, and I'm so grateful to have you in my life. May this year bring you endless happiness and good health. Cheers to you on your special day. Okay, a happy birthday to my baby boy. You brought so much joy to your brothers and I. God bless your new age. Much love from your family and mom, Na Mankwa Evelyn. Right, a happy birthday to the love of my life, my beautiful wife. On your special day and always, I want you to know how much you are appreciated, admired and adored. You light up my world with your radiant smile. Um, kind heart and loving spirit. May this year bring you joy, happiness, and all your heart's desires. I promise to always cherish, support, and love you more with each passing, eh, sorry, passing day. Here's to another amazing year together with all my love now and forever. Oh, from Ransford. Okay, so this is also from Eric. Happy birthday, Stephen. God bless you. And we have a video here to celebrate a man sent on a mission to spread the word, the word to the world. A huge blessing to this generation, a man full of wisdom and godly insight. Uh, we are celebrating a 70th birthday uh, of Bishop George. Today happens to be your birthday. God richly bless you for that. So we have a few celebrities to celebrate as part of our um, August month, and that was Nana Mama Brown. We also have former Interior Minister um, Kafu Danku, an actress, Becca, an uh, musician, Destiny Etiko, a Nigerian art actress, Mercy Johnson. We also have Moses Bliss's wife, and Odesheba um, Prissy, Too Sweet Annan, and Fela Makafui. Right, so this is where we end the birthday segment here on the Coco Digest Morning Show. I am Miriam Abnadedi. Please stay with us. Clement Yabankwe is up next with business. I heard today was your birthday.